Aloha and welcome to Stan the Energy Man. You'll notice Stan is out for the day, so filling in is Rachel the Energy Woman. And today on our STEM show, we'll have a little bit of a power hour in half an hour um, with Executive Director of Center for Tomorrow's Leaders, Katie Chang. So welcome to the show, Katie. Thanks for joining us today. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So could you tell our audience a little bit about what Center for Tomorrow's Leaders is? Right, so the heart of Center for Tomorrow's Leaders is something that I know that many people feel in Hawaii, and that's that there's a lot of opportunity, but there's also a lot of challenges for our state. And so the idea behind the organization is that we should start earlier to find and then prepare our state's future leaders so that they can make a difference in the future, but they can also start making a difference right now. And so our mission in a phrase is to engage, equip, and empower Hawaii's future leaders to start making a difference now. Outstanding. So, as I mentioned, we're here in the power hour, power half hour, um, and I really appreciate that you use that term in power. Mm -hmm. And so, for us, this show is primarily focused on energy in Hawaii, mm -hmm. um, and because of the work we do at right. Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies, mm -hmm. we focus primarily on renewable energy. Mm -hmm. um, so, when we talk about leaders and we talk about educating people today so that they can make the impact needed for tomorrow, mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about how your programs or what your framework is like to empower, equip, and I'm sorry, the last E? Engage, equip, and empower. You get, you can equip and empower, yes. Yeah, sure. So I can talk more specifically about maybe some energy-related projects that the students are focused on. But sure. I think more generally, um, we our, our model is that we go and work directly with mainly public high schools. And we go to the principal and we say, how do we find the more non-traditional student leaders? Mm -hmm. So the ones who don't have leadership title but have potential to lead. Mm -hmm. And so we go and we find those students and we actually offer weekly leadership development courses to um, empower them to make a difference. So we use the same framework. It's a national research-based model that's focused on character, then goes to vision. We talk about innovation. And then lastly, how do you empower others around a shared vision? And based on that, the students identify a need in their school or in the community, and they start to make a difference. Oh, I see. So is the model something that um, when you come to a principal or you come to a school and you ask them if they're interested, when you mentioned that you offer a curriculum, mm -hmm. is that to augment their existing schooling or is it like a class they take afterwards or sports or like what does it kind of fall under in the scheme? Sure. Of? Well, for overall the Department of Education, their overall vision is to help students be college and career ready. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of the soft skills and leadership is tied to that. Definitely. The class itself is definitely elective though. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily tied to any of the core content areas, okay. but it definitely is in design to to find students and help them make a difference in whatever field they choose to go into. Okay. So students who participate in the program or in this course, mm -hmm. um, what, what are their expectations? What, what kind of things are they doing throughout the course? Right, well, it's a little bit of a balance because in some cases we're offering the course within an existing program. So okay. leadership may not be something that students have deliberately chosen, but we actually like that because sometimes leadership, the mantle can be a, a really difficult burden to bear. or They okay. may not think that they're a leader. So we find that it's good to meet students where they're at and, and to find them and to give them opportunities to lead. Um, we also run another program, which is a fellowship program. Mm -hmm. And it was based loosely after Pacific Century Fellows, which is a very prominent right. leadership program. Um, and so in that program, students actually elect to be a part of the cohort. In I that see. sense, they've already distinguished themselves as leaders, and now they're looking to take their leadership to the next level. So there's definitely more anticipation, more expectation that comes in as a part of that program. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. So I jumped right into the heart of Center for Tomorrow's you Leaders. Did, um, which is great. Without asking about why, <laughs> why are you involved, and how did yeah. Center for Tomorrow's Leaders come about? OK, so I was actually a part of the very first cohort of fellows that was ever offered. And so um, the program has developed quite a bit over the last few years and we became our own independent nonprofit three years ago um, and so that still is pretty great that I was an alumni of the program that now has yeah. the privilege of leading the organization and so that's how I originally got affiliated Outstanding. Mm -hmm. Now, would you consider yourself um, a non-traditional leader at the time that you were in the program or I would consider myself non-traditional in the sense that I didn't come from a traditional high school. I'm actually, I was homeschooled. My parents are both professors, and so I kind of came on the fringe of the educational sector, I and I think that that actually really helps in our work because students can't really label me coming from a certain right. high school. I kind of, maybe I'm just weird, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I would consider myself non-traditional in that sense okay. and not taking a 
traditional school route. I see. Mm -hmm. It seems to have served you well. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with you in the past and mm -hmm. have met a number of your fellows um, mm -hmm. and outstanding, really not even outstanding youth, but just outstanding individuals. Yes. Um, so you oh, definitely yeah. have run the organization well. Um, and so I appreciate the work that you've been doing thus far. Well, thank you. Um, I'm curious though, as we talk about leadership and particularly in the scope of renewable energy, mm -hmm. um, the necessity for locally based energy solutions mm -hmm. is becoming more prevalent, I right. think, especially as we see things happen, not even just in our state and around the country, but around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so the implications for what students who focus on energy projects, mm -hmm. like the impact that they will have, mm -hmm. do you know if that, I, I, I'm curious if at this stage of their leadership development, if they can grasp kind of, mm -hmm how much they could potentially be taking on. Right. Well, I think it's a testament to a lot of community organizations that have had a lot of great conversation with youth about the energy future mm -hmm. of our state because mm -hmm. whenever we um, put this before the students in the form of a question of the greatest needs facing Hawaii, usually energy-related issues are now at the top, whereas maybe even just a few years ago that wouldn't have been the case. So Absolutely. I think the level of awareness is certainly there. And now we're trying to find ways that students can deal with a, a really big issue issue mm -hmm. in you know a school year or in a relatively small amount of time so we had one project called Fahrenheit 73 mm -hmm. and it was trying to address this problem that classrooms are really really hot and it's yes. a problem that's ongoing and so they got together and they crowdfunded about twenty thousand dollars for a photovoltaic AC unit at a portable classroom at Campbell High School mm -hmm. and it's a great example of students being able to make a difference in a big issue right. but being able to take that first step so we're hopeful that we can replicate that kind of process for more energy related projects. Okay. What type of partnerships are needed to evidence something like that? You mentioned crowdfunding, so mm -hmm. dollars certainly I'm right. sure are important. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but what are some of the other pieces that make that project or projects yes. like that function? Yeah, there were a lot of great partners. We have volunteer coaches on our side mm -hmm. that are working directly with the students on the mm -hmm. simple things of mill merges and things that are needed yes. to get the word out. Um, there are obviously partnership directly with the school and with the Department of Education. There was mm -hmm. a lot of great support there from facilities and then of course the corporate partners and then right. the actual company that installed the, the PVAC unit so it was a lot of people working together and that's the journey of leadership that the students got to experience they got to experience a shared vision so that was very exciting that's incredible mm -hmm. can you talk to me a little bit about the range of students like um, what grade or what age is kind of where are they in their yeah, high school so we're we focus at the high school level mm -hmm. and for our school-based program we try and find students that are younger freshmen sophomore so that they can develop and by the time they get to our fellowship program we're looking at 11th and 12th graders so older okay. students excellent mm -hmm. now, do you find um, let's see I guess how does interest like how, how do you how do the students get the word out in the school so if the mm -hmm. principal adopts the concept and they say right. yes we want this in our schools mm -hmm. and how does that reach the students right so sometimes when we go to a school we train within an existing program so at Kapolei High see. School right. this year we'll be working within an academy okay. and so the students are already there and there's already a structure for it In other places like McKinley High School and Roosevelt High School we actually go to teachers and ask for nominations so we'll actually give them a scenario of what leadership potential may be like so it could be the student that at lunch they're standing under the tree mm -hmm. and all the students go and pay tribute to them but they would never be formally involved in anything in school so then the teachers can kind of have a visual of what that might look like and then they can nominate them for the course so we can try and find different ways to find that demographic of student knowing that they don't necessarily want to be found yet I see. so I think that's a bit of the challenge that is selecting. an interesting challenge mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean outside of youth just leadership in a general sense you mm -hmm. often I and I'm not going to go all philosophical, but why we have a representative government is because many times the things that we're concerned about and we have opinions about, um, they're not always things that we want to represent as individuals, mm -hmm. um, as our community leaders. Right. And so when you find that non-traditional leader or you find the student who necessarily, may not necessarily be keen mm -hmm. on leading, um, mm -hmm. what does that pathway to leadership look like? like? I'm curious if I... I'm just curious, I guess your pathway as well, mm -hmm. but like how does that progression take place? Yeah, well, we're kind of in the beginning stages of, of thinking that through. Once you get identified in high school and you have this these tools to become a leader, what happens as you progress to college and career? And mm -hmm. I think at this stage, a lot of it is possibility thinking, of expanding mm -hmm. the horizon to think, maybe I don't just have to do this, or I just have to do that. But as a leader, there are many opportunities, maybe even ones that I'm not aware of. And right. so I think, you know, guest speakers, 
through mentorship opportunities. And then, of course, this project base mm -hmm. is really important to develop right. small wins and to see opportunities. But how that comes for Center for Tomorrow's Leaders in terms of what do alumni then go do, right. that's something that, that we need to develop. It would be great to see political candidates. It would be great to see startups. It would mm -hmm. be great to see a lot of really exciting things like that. Um, but we're, that's something that we're going to need to develop as an organization. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So in that process of development, do you see that um, as partial developing relationships with, I guess, current industry professionals, mm -hmm. or um, you mentioned volunteer mentors, I believe, and coaches. Mm -hmm. um, so are those from select industries? I guess what I'm leading to is um, <laughs> as we grow in this energy space um, and as it's highlighted as a top concern in your mm -hmm. cohorts, like how do we bridge that gap if there is one? Absolutely. I think, um, you know, the the mentors and the guest speakers that we have in the program mm -hmm. um, in the beginning stages were very business and government focused but as okay. we started to realize there are different issues at play and there are obviously developing industries then our guest speakers have to expand and so energy is definitely an area that we've started to see more guest speakers and that's another great example of possibility thinking and people mm -hmm. thinking creatively about renewable energy and different goals um, that's always a great topic for the students to hear from so that's again something that we need to develop as we move forward Outstanding. Mm -hmm. And then for alumni, how do they, if they do, um, how do they engage with the ongoing cohorts after they've, I, I'm guessing a graduation takes place at some mm -hmm. point. Yeah, so we're really happy this year. We had our first alum become a member of our board of directors. She's okay. currently an attorney and uh, she just joined our board. And then almost our entire volunteer coaching team for our fellows program are alumni. So okay. they're definitely building ways for them to come back to make a difference and to start to mentor. Um, and we're also trying to bring them together in a social setting with mixers and things like that so that we can start to share ideas and hopefully it'll grow mm -hmm. organically in terms of you know, how to alumni come back home, the ones right. that aren't home, and the ones that are here, how do they start to develop um, ICC opportunities here in Hawaii? I'm sorry, what was that last term? Type of opportunities? Or any sort of opportunity. Okay. Just eyes to see the opportunities okay. that, that may be here that they may not be okay. aware of. I thought you mentioned an acronym, and I'm like, this is a new one. No, <laughs> no, 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 no acronyms. CTL okay. is the acronym I'll probably use Okay, most. we'll follow that one. I can mm -hmm. follow that one. Mm -hmm. um, it's exciting to see, really, the progression. And as I mentioned, I've worked with you and seen some of the leaders that you've mm -hmm. helped to groom. Um, and I've been able to witness some of this possibility thinking. Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't really known that that was a piece of the program mm -hmm. and part of development. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been really keen on recognizing people taking existing technologies and mm -hmm. existing capabilities mm -hmm. and saying, we're not really using them to mm -hmm. the best ability that we could. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the students I met with recently, he, I mean, it's, <laughs> I feel like I'm not that old, but when people <laughs> say things to me about virtual reality, and they're like, Rachel, and then you can do this, and you can have meetings, and there's platforms, and, and I'm thinking, this happens like right now? <laughs> this sounds very minority report, but um, it's present day. So when you get ideas like that, when you have students who are thinking so far outside of uh, not even necessarily boxes, but outside of your experience, um, mm. how do you guide that? How do you hone that and, and direct it? Well, that's really interesting, and I think having curriculum that's focused on both vision and mm. projects is a way to really do that. So when you're dreaming about what the picture is of where it is that you really want to yeah. go, you can think as big as you want. But by adding a really strong project component to mm -hmm. the leadership curriculum, they're obviously going to be constrained somewhat by time right. and resources. So that's something that a leader has to always balance. That's probably the number one thing a leader has to do. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's really that's really helpful. When you talk about technologies and things like that, mm -hmm. that's something that we haven't really even explored. And I think that that has a lot of potential too. And, and re students realizing what they can do and how we can actually mentor and give them opportunities to explore what it is that they're dreaming about. Right, that's fascinating. Mm. Um, so we're going to take a bit of a break. We're going to allow the audience to dream a bit and see what the future could be. Um, and we'll come back in a little bit with Katie Chang from Center for Tomorrow's Leaders. Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna. I hope you please visit us this summer. It's a wonderful summer. It's actually a cooler summer than we're used to. But I hope that you come back and visit us and watch our show, Education, Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, here on Think Tech Hawaii. It's at noon every Wednesday. See you then. Aloha, I'm Kirsten Baumgart-Turner, and I'm fortunate to be able to host Sustainable Hawaii at thinktechhawaii.com. I hope you'll join in with us every Tuesday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. to see the interesting people we have to share with you their information. Aloha. 
Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on thinktechhawaii.com. I hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. to discover what's likable about science. Aloha, how you doing? Welcome to Ibachi Talk. I'm here, Gordo the Tech Star on Think Tech Hawaii. And I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Aloha. Good to, have him, good, to, good to have Andrew here in the house. Please join us every Friday from 1 to 1.30 and follow us up on YouTube. And remember, as we say at the end of every show, how, how you, you doing? doing? And we're back with Stan the Energy Man here in our Power Half Hour. I'm Rachel the Energy Woman standing in for Stan. And today we've been sitting and chatting with Katie from Center for Tomorrow's Leaders. Um, just to recap a bit, we talked about dreaming some um, mm -hmm. and primarily with with leaders thinking outside of the box and pressing boundaries and possibility thinking. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked about energy and how really we're at a time now in Hawaii, but globally, where we have to really think of new ways to use existing technologies as well as what's possible for things that perhaps we even haven't conceptualized yet. Mm -hmm. um, so if we could talk a little bit about the upcoming project that you and I have. Mm -hmm. um, so first Center for Tomorrow's Leaders and Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about how that came to be. Sure, so basically in our fellows cohort we now have 20 students who are juniors and seniors that represent both our public and our private high schools and they've come together and so we divide that group of 20 into four project teams and we try and identify some of the key areas that our state is going to face and so our partnership mm -hmm. with H HCAT was perfect because yeah. it's something that's really really important and you graciously agreed to mentor a student project. So there's going to be a group of students. We're going to partner together, and within that time, try and figure out how we can make a difference in that in that area. And maybe you can talk a little bit more about the specifics of it. Definitely, I'm really excited about this project. Actually, mm -hmm. um, internships and Coupo, I know, is one of the programs that you're familiar mm -hmm. with and yep. partner with. Sure. Um, and just their model of not only engaging youth with existing industry, but identifying spaces for people to grow and create jobs mm -hmm. um, and green business, which I think mm -hmm. is important and pivotal to us as a state making a transition to a more sustainable future. Mm -hmm. um, so we have the opportunity at HCAT through many of our renewable energy um, research and development projects to share that message and to showcase the possibilities that, mm -hmm. that the state can undertake or that people can come in and exercise. Yes. Um, and so to be able to have students and to have students with ideas that, mm -hmm. I mean, we couldn't even fathom, mm -hmm. um, we're really excited to be able to push our own boundaries mm -hmm. um, in a space that's, I don't want to say playful, but it's, it's a space that we're allowed to fail forward. Mm -hmm. We're able to make yes. mistakes. Um, mm -hmm. And so to have, I mean, not even non-traditional leaders, but just to have the caliber of students that we've seen come through the program. Mm -hmm. um, we're really excited to participate, so yes. we appreciate you extending that offer. Yes, and I think what's really exciting too is that what you folks are looking to do is really to create a pipeline back. So right. what are we trying to do and how do we work with students, young people at every age, so that they're actually providing a structure to be able to grow into these careers. So I think it's very strategic and we're really excited about it as well. So I'm going to nerd out for a little bit. Absolutely. <laughs> Please do. Um, I think it's really fascinating um, just the, the implications that some of the basic concepts that we forward in renewable energy technology, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we talk about often is distributed energy. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes you'll hear that in the form of microgrids, you'll hear people talk about nanogrids mm -hmm. and sure. localized energy production. But essentially what that means is creating a framework where you have redundancy mm -hmm. and creating those pipelines so that if you have generation and distribution and storage, that you have them co-located in such a way that each of those are are as efficient as possible mm -hmm. in that system. Sure. So when I think about leadership, mm -hmm. and oftentimes people think of leaders as people at you know, some progressed stage in their career, and they've managed a number of people, mm -hmm. and they've done a number of projects and seen a number of things, and so those people are leaders. Right. Um, but to identify people early on mm -hmm. in that pathway, mm -hmm. and to pair them with people who may be further along in the progression of their leadership, mm -hmm. and to epitomize each of them in those stages mm -hmm. in a system mm -hmm. is like, I mean, I get chicken skin <laughs> thinking about it. Yes. Yeah, so it's really exciting just the, the parallels between energy, kind of basic concepts of systems, um, and then the program that you're forwarding. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's a great, it's an excellent analogy, and the analogy sometimes we use, too, that isn't um, as science-related. Quite so but, nerdy. Well, I think it's fantastic, <laughs> but even the sports analogy of providing yeah. opportunities for development because we can't accept, expect major league play right away. Right. right. We have to have ways that we're developing talents. So. Right. So how do we get there? Mm -hmm. And I think um, in another show, we joke about it in the office often, um, 
We say, how do you eat an elephant? <laughs> it's one bite at a time. Absolutely. And so if the elephant is this renewable energy sphere, mm -hmm. um, and if the elephant is making sure that we have reliable power mm -hmm. and making sure that we have more local opportunities for people who mm -hmm. want to stay home, um, and valuable opportunities that are impactful positively for the island for people who want to come and make this their home, mm -hmm. um, I think that starts with creating leadership opportunities, but even just making people aware that mm -hmm. leadership is not outside of their reach. Absolutely. Yep. And so I've met a few of the students who've come through the program. Mm -hmm. um, I've been able to work with some while they're in the program. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, how do they identify what is, like what's important in their community? And mm -hmm. what, is, what does it look like for someone who's perhaps not really wanting to be in the forefront, to be mm -hmm. selected, mm -hmm. to be groomed, to become a leader, and then for them to say, this is something that's important to me in my community, mm -hmm. and I know that I can have this impact. So right. what does that look like? Sure. Well, part of the training is really, we want students to develop eyes to see needs around them, okay. and not just needs that they think are important, that they want to be important, but mm -hmm. needs that actually are important. And ah. so as students do the market research, as they start to identify issues in their school and their community, a lot of it has to do with interviews, and interviewing people ah. that they don't know. Okay. So trying to get a sense of what are the what are the problems, what are the opportunities. So an example would be at our class at McKinley, they mm -hmm. started realizing that there were a lot of independent living facilities for senior citizens around their high school. And oh. they realized that loneliness was a huge issue as they started to interview. And they started to get a sense of how many were independently living independently. And so oh. they ended up designing a project based on that, and it culminated in a senior prom. So it was a prom for senior wow. citizens so that over 100 seniors attended and they came together and they actually got to meet each other and exchange phone numbers. And so I think it's a great example of they suspected there was a need, but when they actually started doing research, mm -hmm. they realized the need was right there in their community. And so hopefully we can develop that more and more with every school in their surrounding community. Wow. That's powerful. Yeah, it was a great project. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned Kupu. Mm -hmm. um, yep. If you're able to, are you able to name some of your other partners and what those working relationships look like? Yeah, so, um, well, for our fellows program, of course, HCAT, we're really excited right. about that. We also are working on a partnership with an international school okay. so that the students can design um, a, a partnership in collaboration. Um, we're looking at a water-related project. Uh, Catholic Charities has been a great partner for social-related, Aloha United Way. Mm -hmm. Um, so there have been a lot of really great project mentors along the way that are really strong in their content area right. and really appreciate the energy that our young people can bring to some of these problems. Wow. And so you mentioned the five project teams. Mm -hmm. Do you identify those project teams by areas of interest, or mm -hmm. how, how do you break that group up? Yeah, so we've actually, um, over the years, we've actually put more structure into the projects, realizing that students, some students need the structure, and some are fine with just creating as they go. Mm -hmm. And so it's part of um, Center for Tomorrow's Leaders, something that we've wanted to do to move not just in social services, mm -hmm. but moving into STEM and other areas as well. And so that's where a lot of these projects were designed, really mm -hmm. brainstorming with our stakeholders mm -hmm. and realizing where it is that we want to go. So hopefully that's something that can change every year and develop as Hawaii's needs develop and are hopefully solved. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. We So I think you probably gathered that we joke a bit in our office, so I'm going to give you great. another one. <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> but um, not that... It's good to have problems, but problems ensure that you have people working on solutions. That's true. Um, so in that way, it's awesome to continue to collaborate, and it's awesome to push people to think outside of their mm -hmm. norms. Mm -hmm. um, so if there would be a call to action um, for Center for Tomorrow's Leaders, what type of partnerships or what sort of engagement, like what needs do you have presently? Well, yeah, that's great. And I think, you know, first off, many people who watch the show and who are interested in Hawaii's future, mm. many of them are parents themselves. And so mm. being able to spread the word about Center for Tomorrow's Leaders, the programs that we offer, if you know a student that goes to a certain school or even for our fellowship program, I think the more students, the more diverse students that are right. involved in this is obviously going to be a benefit for all of us. And so I think help in spreading the word is really important. And then as we've talked extensively about mentorship for the projects, mm and for the students themselves is a big part of what we do. And so maybe there's a sector that we haven't thought about yet, maybe especially in some of the creative industries. Mm. Um, and so if any recommendations, if people would like to go to our website and recommend opportunities like that, we're always looking uh, for more opportunities. So that would be wonderful as well. Okay, can you tell me the timeline of engagement? So if I 
as a parent, <laughs> said, hey, I, I would like this at my child's school. Mm -hmm. And then I convinced my principal, or, or do I start with you? Yeah. And then how long does it take till you guys come? Mm -hmm. And how do you decide? That's like, great. So we've pretty much set our schedule for this school year. So we operate very much on a school okay. schedule. So for our fellows program, mm -hmm. uh, we select students in the spring. Okay. So the applications come out on our website, and we select during that time. Mm -hmm. For our school-based program, if a school is interested, we normally do it a year in advance. So we okay. do the planning that first school year with a plan to launch right when school starts the fall of the following year. Okay. And so that's kind of the timeline that we're looking, looking at. But starting the conversation early is always better. Okay, so with a year out, um, does the buy-in need to come from the principal or is if yes if, okay usually it is usually okay. it's from a principal or maybe it's just someone that's interested that wants to set up that introductory meeting okay and then we can see what the needs of the school are okay mm -hmm. and so as a community member if I were a parent who had a high school child mm -hmm. at a high school that the program wasn't yet offered mm -hmm. I could set up a meeting with my principal and mm -hmm. someone from Center for Tomorrow's Leaders that's right and we actually have an interest form on our website so it goes Perfect. directly to our staff and okay. so that would be the, the best place to go. What is your website? It's centerfortomorrowsleaders.org. And no hyphens, dashes, nope. or anything, all spread Just out those words. Word. Yep, okay. absolutely. Very good. Um, you've been generous with your time, um, both with Center for Tomorrow's Leaders and with us here today, mm -hmm. and we appreciate that sincerely. I've enjoyed working with you. It's really awesome Likewise, to be able to. Likewise, very much. Thank Likewise. you. It's mm -hmm. awesome to have this time to chat with you and mm -hmm. share with the community the work that you're doing. Right. So, as you heard, Center for Tomorrow's Leaders is open to suggestions. They're open to your engagement. Um, so if you have an interest, go to centerfortomorrowsleaders.org. And thank you for tuning in for Stan the Energy Man with Rachel the Energy Woman. We hope you have an excellent weekend. Enjoy your Aloha Friday. Take care.